And maybe let's just kind of bang through. So new high grade bladder cancer, is that person, unless they're getting an intensified trial or maybe bridge trial, we have that open here. Are they getting BCG typically speaking in your practice if if you've got the stocks and so forth? Yeah, most most all of them are getting uh, BCG for induction. And then uh, I usually scope them. And so, you know, this is another thing, obviously dealer's choice. A lot of people are different. If they're higher risk, you know, if they had high grade T1 to begin with or high grade or a lot of CIS, I usually do that surveillance in the OR, that first surveillance with six weeks. And I'm a big fan of doing biopsies with them awake. It makes me feel better. It makes the patient feel better to document that they didn't have active cancer in their bladder, right? So I'm a big fan of doing that. And then for all of my higher risk patients, we usually advise maintenance definitely for a year. And then it just depends on supply. If supply is not an issue and, you know, we're not struggling with a bunch of new patients with new diagnoses that month, then usually we keep going. You know, I've got a couple of guys in their 30s or 40s who I, I really want, would love for them to get to three years because obviously the data is really strong for getting them to three years of maintenance. But honestly, the typical 60 to 70 year old patient, as you know, they don't love BCG. They don't finish it in a really quick period of time. And so one year of maintenance, I think if their bladder looks clean, we usually stop there. And then some of my kind of, like you said, the, the high grade TA that's a small lesion. They maybe even fit in the intermediate risk category. I usually do induction. And then if their bladder looks clean, sometimes we watch. Yeah. And it brings up a point that whenever we're talking about bladder sparing approaches, you got to have a bladder worth sparing. If they're miserable and they're, you know, knocked out for two weeks after every BCG installation, that's, that's a, and, and many times they're just like, take it out, doc. I'm, I'm ready to sleep through the night and kind of get on with it. Okay, so first, Cisto, whether in the office or in the OR, CIS only, how does that conversation look like? Yeah, so they've had BCG times six, and they have uh, you know CIS only. Again, it depends on where they started, right? Where, where were we when we started? If they had high-grade TA and it was a small area, and now they have a bigger area of CIS, it's a little bit more concerning. But technically, still, you know, again, doesn't really meet the criteria for BCG unresponsive. And so I generally will reinduce that that person. Now, if they have a really, really, if you know, they have a ton of CIS, they're really young, we'll start talking about cystectomy. And like you said, a lot of it is just planting the, the notions in in the patients in their head, right? About what what to expect. So you don't want them to fail again and then say, we need to take your bladder out. And then they're like, well, when did this, when, when was this even part of the discussion? So we'll talk about everything. And, and that also might be a good person where, you know, we do, we do, we use blue light on follow-up surveillance, but uh, I usually do a reinduction course at BCG. And are you all able to give them full dose induction? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So I, th- I think that's pretty, pretty consistent. You know, if it's extensive, progressive, alarm bells, that might be, we should really talk about a cystectomy. And if they're unwilling or unfit, we can talk about some other options. You know, if they progress with more CIS, I think that's basically BCG, unresponsive disease. It's not the FDA definition, which was intended for FDA approval, but clinically it's like, yeah, this patient is not responding and and I don't think they're going to benefit from another course of BCG. I also, you know, it's so easy to forget when we're talking about non loss evasive, but, you know, restaging, I get top to bottom CT scans just to make sure there's, you know, no kind of weird stuff going on. Okay. What about if they've got papillary disease after induction? Yeah. Uh, you know, so obviously important to do a, a good, adequate TUR, make sure you know that what their muscle invasion status is. And again, if they're high grade TA, still doesn't meet the criteria for BCG unresponsive. So I, I would I would lean more towards a re reinduction course. Multifocal, bigger areas, again, the discussion also about a cystectomy. But I, I would lean towards um another a course of BCG. If they're high grade T1, you know, then you have to have a real discussion with that group because as you know, now you start to have this, you know, they 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 would likely co- they qualify for, you know, this kind of BCG unresponsive phenotype. And I think it it just depends on a lot of things, age, uh preferences, how they've tolerated initial intravesical therapy. I re-resect them, you know, maximally 
And if I feel good about the resection and I don't feel like, you know, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of disease, I think gemdosi is a reasonable option. We have some BCG exposed trials um, as well. And I'd, I've had some patients who have said, hey, can we just give it another shot with six more BCG? Now, you know, obviously, like, like we've talked about, a lot of it is how you counsel them, how you discuss it with them. I really haven't pulled the trigger in the last couple of years on doing a cystectomy in this group at that stage, unless I had a patient who had high grade T1 with micropapillary features. Yeah, that patient got a cystectomy. But <clears throat> I've had several with high grade T1 that I've resected, resected well, and then either moved them to a clinical trial or moved them to further intravesical therapy and they've done okay. I think the bridge trial will be interesting. Gemdosi has a lot of great data in that in this space. And so I, I guess my first inclination will be to move them to Gemdosi. But I, I, I have a couple people who have just gotten another round of BCG and they've done okay as well. Okay. And, you know, I appreciate it. This is intended to be practical. I don't think anything you're saying is like, oh my gosh, like, you know, this is, you got to meet the patient where they're at and, and you're using some of your your clinical assessment of the whole scenario, the the taking into social demographics, the travel, the tolerance of the BCG, the lower urinary tract symptoms. I mean, it's a it's a whole gamish, right? And we're trying to make a decision on how to best manage these folks. And you know, for the CIS and for the TA high grades that are smaller, you know, if they've got a little small one centimeter centimeter TA high grade after having extensive T1 high grade, again, I don't think we're going to call that a a rip roaring failure. 